As stone throwers and crossbow arrows cut through the sky, a battle of unequal strength officially begins. This war is not just between Spartacus and Crassus. It is a pioneering war of the slave class against tyranny. Facing Crassus' well-equipped army of 100,000 soldiers, Spartacus' 10,000 slave legion appears so small and vulnerable. Compared to the current situation and combat power, this is clearly an unwinnable war. However, for the pursuit of lifelong freedom in their hearts, every rebel's gaze is unwavering. Loud shouts reach Crassus' ears. Crassus remains calm, determined to kill these traitors in this battle. As catapults and crossbows ignite and streak through the sky, Spartacus hesitates not and leads his legion to charge towards the enemy. Giant bows and crossbows launch like rain upon the rebels, followed closely by the sounding of the attack horn. With a majestic momentum, a force of 30,000 armored troops advances forward. As the slave army is about to charge into the enemy camp, Spartacus suddenly orders a halt in the advance. The enemy forces decisively charge forward without hesitation. A massive trench suddenly appears between the two armies. Countless Roman soldiers fall into the trap and are stabbed to death before they can react. It turns out that all of this was a trap set by Spartacus. Before they can comprehend what is happening, archers on Spartacus' side unleash a volley of arrows. The smooth and successful strategic deployment leaves Caesar and Crassus astonished. They quickly change to a turtle formation to withstand the onslaught of sword strikes. Spartacus doesn't give the enemy a moment to catch their breath. He charges ahead, leaping into the enemy camp. His brothers follow without hesitation, piercing the enemy's heart. They madly slash and kill those adorned in their fancy armor. At this moment, everyone seems like invincible war gods, fiercely wielding their swords. Unexpectedly, something unimaginable happens. Suddenly, Crassus orders the indiscriminate use of catapults and crossbows towards the front line. In order to ensure victory, the despicable and shameless individual doesn't even care about the lives of his 30,000 soldiers. Everyone on the main battlefield becomes a target of slaughter. Lamentations fill the air, flames erupt, and many are burned to death before they can react. Clearly, there is no way to retreat now. Spartacus' only way out is to charge forward. Crassus stands in the rear, overseeing the entire situation. As he witnesses the dwindling numbers of the uprising army, it is clear that the remaining rebels are destined for failure. At this moment, Crassus is filled with confidence in his imminent victory. Suddenly, a cry is heard from behind. It turns out that Gannicus has led 1,000 cavalry to join the fray. They swiftly charge into the rear of the enemy forces. Instantly seizing control of the catapults and crossbow positions, Gannicus immediately orders the repositioning of the catapults and crossbows, aiming them directly at Crassus. This unexpected turn of events disrupts the Roman army. The deputy commander hastens to suggest a quick retreat. However, Crassus remains calm and composed. He immediately commands Caesar to lead 10,000 soldiers to surround and suppress Gannicus and his group in the rear. The attack horn sounds once again. Crassus is determined to lead the remaining 60,000 troops straight towards Spartacus. In the confusion of the war, Crassus rode his warhorse and saw Spartacus fighting fiercely in the crowd. The two lock eyes for a moment. Crassus is brimming with confidence, intending to use his learned swordsmanship to strike down Spartacus's head. Seizing the opportunity, Spartacus charges towards him head-on. With a single sword strike, Spartacus cuts Crassus down from his horse, leaving him lying on the ground. At this moment, Crassus finally understands the vast difference in strength between himself and a true gladiator. His practiced swordsmanship is utterly inadequate against absolute power. The duelist he sparred with in training is entirely subservient to his authority. As Spartacus rises to seize him, soldiers have already evacuated Crassus from the battlefield. Spartacus immediately orders Agrin to take command of the battlefield. The only hope for victory now lies in slaying the enemy leader, Crassus. In doing so, there is a glimmer of hope in this battle of immense disparity in strength. Meanwhile, Gannicus finds himself surrounded by Roman soldiers. He knew that this was a path of no return. 
Everyone was trying their best to kill every Roman soldier. The difference in numbers between the two sides was too great. He witnessed friend after friend being surrounded and killed. Caesar pierced Naivia's body with his sword. Now she could reunite with Crixus without any regrets. At this moment, only Gannicus was struggling desperately amidst the siege of Roman soldiers. Caesar wanted to take the opportunity to come and kill Gannicus. But his strength was insufficient, he was beaten when he got close, so he had to retreat from a distance. At this point, a large number of Roman soldiers surrounded Gannicus. Even though he was the undefeated god of war, it was difficult to withstand the entanglement and exhaustion of a hundred people. In the end, under the siege of several Roman armies, Gannicus was already exhausted. On the slope at the edge of the battlefield, Crassus escaped with a dozen soldiers escorting him. Spartacus, brimming with a murderous aura, charged towards him. With a furious roar, he concentrated all his inner power onto his sword and rushed directly towards the crowd. The manifestation of Spartacus, possessed by the war god, directly instilled fear in Crassus, leaving him stunned. By this point, Spartacus had already killed hundreds of people on the battlefield, and he was nearing exhaustion. Meanwhile, Crassus had long engaged in sword duels with renowned fighters. Seeing Spartacus, whose power had greatly diminished, he let go of his awe. Looking at this extremely arrogant and conceited Roman nobleman in front of him, Spartacus felt intense hatred. It was under their incessant oppression that countless suffering slave brothers led lives devoid of dignity. With each sword strike against the nobleman, he would be reminded of those brothers and sisters who had been brutalized by them. This was the driving force for him to win a life of freedom, even if it meant sacrificing his own life. Crassus, completely devoid of any means to defend himself, awaited the arrival of death. Unexpectedly, fate played a cruel trick, as a spear suddenly pierced through Spartacus' chest. Enduring the intense pain, Spartacus pulled out the spear, determined to make one final effort. But at this moment, he had no strength left even to stand up. Readily accepting the arrival of death, in an instant, his wife's red ribbon suddenly appeared on the ground. It was the only memento his wife left him, symbolizing their yearning for a simple and ordinary civilian life. However, he was born in the wrong era, making it difficult to fulfill his wishes. For countless oppressed slaves, even having enough to eat was a challenge. Crassus raised his sword with both hands, preparing to pay his final respects to Spartacus. Suddenly, Agrin appeared before him, colliding with him and knocking Crassus down the hill. Agrin intended to seize the opportunity to kill Crassus. At this moment, a large number of Roman soldiers had already surrounded them, closing in. With no other choice, Nasir and Agrin quickly helped Spartacus up and took advantage of the chaos to escape. Spartacus looked back, casting a fleeting glance at the battlefield. By now, the entire battlefield had been completely occupied by the Roman army. Perhaps this was a fate that could not be changed. After his great victory, Crassus, in order to assert his dominance to all the slaves who harbored thoughts of rebellion, crucified all the captives. The scene was too gruesome, with cries echoing for tens of kilometers. He wanted to eliminate these traitors in the cruelest way possible, this was the only fate for those who opposed the Roman nobility. Heartbreakingly, his most beloved woman, Kore, was also crucified. In that moment, the innocent Kore finally understood that she was nothing more than a plaything. Even if the master loves you dearly, actions that cross the boundaries of master and servant will also be subjected to severe punishment. Just then, Pompey and the magistrate arrived on their spirited horses. His face was filled with joy because he personally led the troops to eliminate the slave army that had escaped into the mountains. He had already sought recognition from the Senate in advance, and the Senate commended Pompey as the greatest hero in suppressing the rebels. Upon hearing this, Caesar was infuriated and accused Pompey of shamelessly seeking glory. Crassus had long recognized the political situation at hand, and he maintained his composure. 
He attributed the great success in crushing the slave army to Pompey, which would help to win Pompey's favor. Thus, the Roman power structure formed a formidable triumvirate, deeply influencing the course of history. Under the scorching sun, Gannicus faintly caught a glimpse of the man he couldn't face. For so many years, Gannicus was willing to live a life of idleness and freedom, without any constraints. But deep down in his heart, he was lost and directionless, feeling a sense of confusion. Until now, he has found his goals and responsibilities. This has given him a deeper understanding and enlightenment about life. At this moment, he returns to the glorious moments of his life, as a true undefeated warrior. At the foot of the Alps, Spartacus awakens. Leda has faithfully kept her promise, waiting here for her beloved safe return. The crowd weeps as they watch Spartacus, but they are powerless. This seemingly unstoppable slave uprising was destined to have a tragic ending. The deeply rooted system of slavery, coupled with the flourishing Roman Empire. The rebellion did not shake its foundations or have a grand strategic plan. Although the uprising ended in failure, its significance went beyond the rebellion itself. With Spartacus' death, the greatest slave uprising in thousands of years finally comes to an end. But it also points to a new direction in life for future generations who are enslaved and yearn for freedom.